Um, certain things are complex, time-consuming, painful. If you ever try to introduce any major change to a large-scale institution with uh, hundreds or thousands of employees across hundreds of apps, you probably know what I'm talking about. And especially if the change was a security improvement that required changing both the applications and then uh, user daily routine, that's exactly the challenge uh, to be considered. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Martin. This is Tomasz. We are the founders of Segfence, and we help companies save time and money while improving their overall security strategy related to user authentication. So banks and uh, other financial institutions spend three times the amount the non-financial institutions are spending on CyberSec, and yet most of them do not provide multi-factor authentication for their entire user base across every app. Instead, only selected users and selected applications are protected from phishing, money in the middle, social engineering, replay, and other attacks on their accounts. And this is because uh, global adoption of multi-factor at scale was considered complex, time-consuming, and painful, and in some situations, impossible to conduct. And this is where we can help. We uh, completely redefine the adoption of multi-factor into large-scale environments. We take any methods available, be it a hardware um, dedicated key or a mobile authenticators or biometrics, and we deploy it into any web application in minutes or hours. So there is no costly software de development, no third-party codes residing in your apps, no vendor locks. Um, you can think of Segfence as an intermediary independent layer that is spun across your infrastructure and providing multi-factor wherever it's needed. Okay, let's see Segfence in action. What you see on a, on a screen is a dashboard of Segfence appliance, which comes in a, in a physical or a, or a virtual form and should be placed somewhere in your infrastructure. So let's assume Amazon.com is the application that you actually own and you're willing to upgrade it from the, uh, from the traditional password-based schema to a multi-factor authentication. What Tomek was doing right now is he logged in with the password base only, as this is a default for, for the apps we're, we're facing. So there are three simple steps we need to conduct in order to make it work with Segfence without touching into, uh, any code of uh, Amazon. So step one involves introducing this app into Segfence itself. So what Tomek will do right now Skill is create, uh, he's creating a virtual host, a kind of representation of the application that we want to protect, and that's done. In step two, we need uh, to change the way traffic flows. It's a very straightforward process done by your network operators, usually in the form of changing a DNS entry or a firewall rule or a routing table. So we need to make uh, the traffic flows between the users and the target app uh, between, um, through segments, and that's, uh, that's done. And step three is the learning phase. In this phase, we need to figure out how the application is being built without um, involving into its code base. So we are sending a special username that will act as a probe uh, that would scan the entire application on multiple layers and figure out and de determine the authentication mechanisms related to, uh, to authentication. So, of course, such user does not exist in Amazon, but this is, uh, thanks to this uh, user, we've gathered intelligence that will help us build the protective layer. Tomek will now refresh the screen, and so, so this is the info we've gathered from this process. And if we apply, that's all we needed to upgrade this app on a different level. So let's see again. The same user that used to log in with password only now will require an extra factor. In this situation, we'll be using a hardware-based keys based on an open standard called the Universal Second Factor, which is currently the most secure method available in the market, and uh, it's really loved by the users, and you will see why. So all uh, I have to do uh, as a user is I click Register New Key and tap, and tap the button. I, I think the adapter is not working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And tap the button. Yeah, we're, we're okay. So what you just saw was uh, we've associated the key with the uh, with the user. So then the consecutive logins would look exactly the same. The experience would be that seamless. So again, just typing the password, like Tomic will do now. Hit authenticate. And touch the button. 
So what you just saw was a complete upgrade of the applications that we did not control, obviously, and uh, then user enrollment and then consecutive logins. So once we have authentication, like multi-factor multi authentication in place, we can do even more. Let's assume this uh, application has certain resources that you're willing to protect with even more care. So Tomek will go to orders, and uh, again, with few clicks, we'd like to make this uh, resource available under uh, special circumstances. So Tomek will create a thing called micro-authorization, and after just few clicks, the, uh, each time the user will try to access this resource, he will be requested to provide additional uh, authentication. So you'll see that the resource that was available right now will require touching the key every time the user accesses it. So this way you not only get reassured that there is this particular entitled user behind the keyboard, the user that you granted permission to, and not the malware controlled machine, and uh, not the session stolen by the bad guys, and um, on top of that, such, such uh, events would be logged and can be examined for possible malicious uh, usage. So we have a few more interesting scenarios to show, uh, but unfortunately, we're running out of time. Uh, we're going to be at our booth for the next, I guess, an hour. So if you want us to show us uh, this and uh, tell us how we can protect your organization at, at a global scale, please join us at the booth. Thank you very much.